Our next speaker is Vice President of Healthcare uh, NVIDIA, a company that I'm sure you've heard of. It's at the forefront of advancements in AI. And she's responsible for the company's worldwide healthcare business, which includes hardware and software platforms uh, for accelerated uh, computing, AI and visualization that power the ecosystem of medical imaging, life sciences, drug discovery and healthcare analytics. Previously, she's led the company's higher education and research businesses, along with strategic evangelism programs, NVIDIA AI Labs, and the NVIDIA Inception program with over 4,000 AI startup members. Kimberly, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, please welcome Kimberly Powell. Uh, thank you so much, Greg, and thank you, Wired, for having me. Uh, I keep saying there's no more exciting time to be in healthcare, and then a few weeks go by and there is an incredible breakthrough. Um, like this summer when I'm on a holiday and both AlphaFold and RosettaFold get published. Uh, so I'm, I'm here today to talk about and share with you the excitement and the advancements that are really going to usher in what I'm calling the next generation of, of drug discovery. So let's talk a little bit about how um, biology is being digitized. And it's being digitized at every level. It sheds light on critical biological information uh, for scientists and advances in instruments and their sensor technology and computing are exponentially increasing the size and resolution of what we can measure and what we can see. Uh, you just heard about genomic sequencing and it's in evolving from whole exome sequencing that measures just 1% of our DNA into whole genome sequencing which is 3 billion base pairs long or 4,200 pages in a book, uh, all the way to being able to sequence the DNA of, of individual cells. Um, Cryo-electron microscopy has recently reached atomic resolution. That means we have the ability to locate individual atoms within a protein. This is the keys to understanding health and disease and designing drugs with uh, fewer side effects. High throughput screening is used to image cells in their activity against uh, chemical or biological compounds. And through robotic automation, we're now reaching millions of experiments in a week, tens of terabytes per day of cell images, and they can be featureized and quantified uh, to more deeply understand uh, the reactions of, of biology and, and other compounds. And our hospitals are, are now producing 50 petabytes of data per year in images and healthcare records that contain really the observable information of humans. And observable information, as you know, is really critical to the scientific method. And so we know biology is an information science where each level uh, and our understanding gets richer from the levels above it and below it. Um, but in terms, in these terms, they're too complex for humans. And we know and that we need artificial intelligence to help us model, search, predict biological process to really exponentially accelerate discovery. We have tens of thousands of unmet diseases and mutating viruses that we need to get in front of. AI is really uh, evolving exponentially, thank goodness. Uh, deep learning has unquestionably revolutionized computing and it's inventing new ways of doing software development to deal with this information science that we've just talked about. Researchers are innovating at the speed of light with new models and new variants of AI. The latest breakthroughs are in a class called self-supervised learning. It's using these new variants of network architectures called autoencoders, transformers, and graph neural networks. These new AI tools are really transcending the critical limitations of supervised learning, like convolutional neural networks that require hard to come by, especially in healthcare, large labeled data sets. Instead, using unlabeled data, these networks can automatically generate a kind of supervision skill to solve some task, can learn a representation of data and generate something new like a summary of doctor's notes or automatically label data, for example, a technique called relationship extraction that can go through a bunch of doctor's notes and identify the relationship of a diagnosis and the prescribed drug. We are experiencing a, Cambridge, a Cambrian explosion in AI that feels like every couple of months, 
And we're witnessing AI methods that achieve superhuman capabilities and are truly reshaping science. And drug discovery is one of those sciences. Drug discovery is reshaping. It's a scientific process. And over the recent years, ringing in the digital biology revolution, this drug discovery process is absolutely being reshaped. And by reshaped, I mean there are new and different choke points where traditional methods can't keep up with the data and its complexity. There's new decision points where predictions can better guide the decisions to uh, proceed or go back and iterate some more. Exploration points where we can go beyond our limited field of view of what we can observe or what we can build. The opportunity to do more with data and computing has never been greater. And we have the perfect confluence of digital biology and AI to fuel and advance new breakthroughs in drug discovery. AI is absolutely generating these breakthroughs. The last 18 months are breathtaking. The scientific community continues uh, to put out um, artificial intelligence breakthroughs that uh, we didn't dream of seeing in this decade. Uh, Google achieved uh, top scores in the Precision FDA challenge with their latest deep variant version one model, a model that can generalize uh, for popular, popular sequencing technologies from Illumina to PacBio to Oxford Nanopore and significantly reduce error rates in genomic variant calling. So the accuracy here is increasing and we're able to do the, achieve this accuracy across very important uh, technologies uh, in sequencing. Without question, the breakthrough of this last year uh, is in protein structure prediction. Uh, by DeepMind's AlphaFold and University of Washington's Rosetta Fold AI models, both approaching experimental methods for protein structure prediction. While the protein sequence databases exploded, the structure gap widened until the summer. The models can generate structures in a matter of minutes. And the, the team at uh, DeepMind has already created their uh, database uh, with all 25,000 human proteins being made available, as well as hundreds of millions of more by the end of the year. At the same time, generative models, transformer models, revolutionary for learning language can describe chemistry structures too, called SMILES. It understands the language of chemistry. NVIDIA and AstraZeneca have developed an AI model called Megamolvart. It can be used for drug target reaction prediction and molecular optimization or de novo molecular generation. It's trained on the, the Zinc database, and this model can now generate models outside of any existing database because it's learned the relationship between atoms and real world molecules. So overnight, the world has all 25,000 human protein structures and it can generate limitless molecules that need to be screened and simulated at supercomputing scales. Atomwise invented AtomNet to massively scale and speed up the drug hit finding process. Their docking platform can screen billions of compounds per day. So screening billions of compounds per day is gonna result in thousands of good hits per day that need to be simulated and selected uh, as molecules for desired pharmaceutical properties. Another great breakthrough, Entos invented OrbNet, a deep learning graph transformer that accelerates simulations by a thousand times in quantum mechanical simulations. These approaches allow simulation of chemical reactions so researchers can see precisely how a protein functions and changes in response to drugs. This is unlocking a new class of molecular simulations and drug discovery. And what ties it all together is healthcare data. Extracting knowledge from biomedical information and images and health records and literature. NVIDIA's Unetter, a novel architecture, a transformer for 3D medical imaging segmentation, can train on the entire medical seg segmentation decathlon database. And we're able to build a model that can perform semantic segmentation of multi organs in multi modalities, MR and CT. And this is really interesting because where convolutional neural network approaches 
are generally trained for a specific, very specific task, a specific organ in a specific modality, these new transformer models can generalize and do both multi-organ and multi-modality. And finally, in the effort to elucidate doctor's notes, it said about 80% of health information is in these notes. The University of Florida used NVIDIA NLP training framework uh, called Megatron that can take advantage of very large supercomputers and Biomegatron, NVIDIA's state-of-the-art biomedical transformer pre-trained model, and using uh, training data from 10 years of anonymized data from 2 million patients and 50 million interactions across specialties from oncology, internal medicine, critical care, Gatortron model was invented. It achieved the largest clinical language model in the world. It truly is elucidating doctor's notes and it can be used for tasks to find patients for clinical trials, predict life-threatening diseases, and give clinical decision support for doctors. Today, we are announcing two new exciting programs here in the UK. As the previous example showed, the recent breakthroughs resulting from AI and protein structure prediction and simulations are reshaping the way protein drugs can be designed. And we're excited to extend the UK's fastest supercomputer, Cambridge One, and our scientists to work with Peptone, a protein engineering company here in the UK, to scale up their efforts in the use of generative models and molecular simulations to improve the design of antibodies that help treat inflammatory diseases like asthma, COPD, and psoriasis. Cambridge One is the perfect scientific instrument. It's built using NVIDIA DGX A100 supercomputers, and it has a full stack of AI and high-performance computing tools, fusing large-scale AI training and inference and supercomputing super scale molecular physics simulation. This is going to turbocharge Peptone's discovery and development in protein engineering. Supercomputing, like Cambridge One, is the modern instru instrument of science. It's helping scientists better understand diseases, proteins, human health. And our journey with AI models and architectures is still just at the beginning. And so today, we also wanna announce the next phase in the life of Cambridge One, the UK's most powerful supercomputer, and the first NVIDIA supercomputer designed and built for external research. Starting today, we're opening a call for proposals to the UK's AI healthcare ecosystem to get access to Cambridge One and help speed and scale innovations to get to market faster and improve patient outcomes sooner. Startups will have the opportunity to meet with our founding partners, AstraZeneca, GlaxoSmithKline, Guys in St. Thomas's NHS Foundation Trust, <clears throat> King's College London, and Oxford Nanopore Technologies. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as I said in the beginning, New breakthroughs from AI and computing are happening every single day. The new possibilities in drug discovery and healthcare are still just emerging. And this is our great opportunity to connect with the innovators of our time and turbocharge their ideas. And so we're delighted to support the UK's AI healthcare uh, startup ecosystem with Cambridge One and deliver more breakthroughs in healthcare. Thank you, Greg. Thank you so much, uh, Kimberly. Really exciting presentation and uh, excited to hear the news about Cambridge One uh, at the end there. Um, I just wanted to sort of um, touch on, you, you, you described, and I, I think it was a great point to sort of, you know, touch on the amazing sort of breakthroughs that have been this year. So many of them very, very exciting. Um, we're seeing a lot of kind of obviously collaboration in this space, a lot of data sets being opened up. Um, I'm interested to, I, th I think you've got a project in open source uh, that you're working on. I think it's with Kings. And what, what kind of a role do you think open source is going to have in this moving, you know, these kind of deep research projects forward? Yeah, I mean, without, that, without a question, open source is how we got to where we are today. Hmm. The AI industry itself has been uh, foundationally built on open source. And you're correct. We have uh, a wonderful open source consortium uh, called Monai the medical open network of AI that we started with King's College London. And this project has taken flight. Uh, it's really just tremendous, the amount of contributors and the pro projects that are emerging uh, to really tackle uh, domain specific problems in healthcare. If you think about how AI emerged, it really emerged by 
uh, consumer applications because we could take all these videos and pictures on our phone and because of things like uh, YouTube and otherwise. Uh, but if you think about uh, the challenges in healthcare, the data looks very different. Uh, 3D images and, and diagnostic imaging are very different from what we take on our phone. Pathology images being one million times larger than the pictures that we take on our phone. Uh, these require domain specific applications. And so, you know, Monai has been dubbed the pie torch of healthcare. And we're trying to uh, really contribute back all of the learnings of the research community at large, as well as the acceleration factors. We talked about this exponential acceleration that we're trying to give to the world through computing methods. And, and we're doing that with Monai. So uh, we're seeing thousands of downloads of this uh, project per day. Uh, and I think it's what it's also doing is it's inviting uh, the computer science community, even non-domain scientists to come work on healthcare problems, which we all need. And at the same time, and you've talked about it here at your conference before, allowing domain experts, mm -hmm. uh, clinicians to get heavily involved in the AI development process. Um, Monai has a, a labeling tool that clinicians can use to really accelerate their transfer of knowledge of their deep domain expertise into the labeling of data so we can generate more and more models. So uh, we're super excited about it and, and open source is absolutely foundational to uh, the speed of light at which we need to innovate in this space. So we talked a lot about kind of, you know, I guess the, 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 the bits, I mean, I'm interested in the, uh, the, uh, the bits and the bytes. I'm interested in kind of maybe talking a little bit about the atoms as well. Um, I know that one of the areas that NVIDIA you have oversight of is, is medical instruments. Now, what's getting you most, exci most excited at the moment in that space? You know, there's so much uh, excitement there. Uh, there are several factors. If you think about uh, today, only one third of the world actually has access to advanced uh, diagnostic imaging and instruments like that. Um, and AI really opens up uh, a tremendous opportunity for, for several reasons. Um, because the, the power of artificial intelligence, you can reduce the cost and the size of the sensor technologies, these instruments that are used, whether you're seeing MRIs that can roll around on wheels, you're seeing x-rays that can roll around on wheels, you're seeing handheld ultrasounds. So you can reduce the size, reduce the cost. We can now increase the access of these incredible technologies to the world. So that's one thing that AI can do. Another great thing AI can do is it can help uh, with a, a less trained professional be able to utilize this technology. Um, we know that Caption Health, for example, has a uh, ultrasound FDA approved that is what's called image guided. It guides the user to really be able to capture the most important information uh, and be able to even make some uh, quantification of uh, what they're seeing in the image. Uh, they were able to use these ultrasounds you know, in the hallways of the hospitals when COVID patients were spilling out and nurses needed to be able to look at uh, what was happening in the heart and in the lungs of, of COVID patients. And so you're now putting the power of what was a very advanced machine into the hands of, uh, of nurses and, and extreme situations like that. And that can really uh, transcend into, into the world here. So, you know, the, the, the fact that we can reduce cost, reduce size, and we can reduce complexity of acquisition and interpretation with AI, um, this is really, really going to blow open the the access to such technologies. And that's that's one of the things that excites me the most. Well, it's great to hear. Uh, Kim Palu, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for sharing the news about Cambridge One. And uh, we look forward to hearing more in the future. I appreciate it, Greg. Thanks so much. Thank you.